The need to protect investor funds and policyholders so the insurance regulatory authority roll out the risk-based supervision model in the country. And now a report by the Actuary Society of Kenya shows that the model has had a bearing on the footing of local underwriters whose solvency levels have shrunk considerably, with general insurers recording a drop from 412% to 101%. Late payment of premiums and a requirement to pay claims promptly has also eaten into insurance firms' capital adequacy ratios. The solvency levels have dropped from 400% to 130%. What that means is that if you had a capital of 400 million, now all of a sudden you're being asked uh, to put in more capital. So th that is the key impact. And the key reasons for it is one, credit risk, which is coming about by people not paying premiums on time, so the insurer is being asked to put in more capital. The second layer is on the, the investments that they're putting in, so things like property, equity. So the, re the re new requirements are that the insurers should be ready to pay for claims when they're required to do that. The continued generalization in pricing of investment risks in the country by international players has also contributed to missed investment opportunities. Having more of a local eye, on uh, pricing the investment risk and even advising the investors such that you know the political risk in Kenya wealth is high can be I guess more accurately priced for the purpose of investment so there's that aspect but some other risks like probably insurance risk motor medical we would actually think those are probably under underpriced so th there's a bit of a balance there as well players in the local actuary sector have also voiced their fears that regulatory disruptions of the financial sector such as the introduction of the interest rate caps and International Financial Reporting Standard 9, effective from next year, potential drawbacks for investments. We've seen significant regulatory disruptions. If I pick just two, the impact of IFRS 9 on the banking sector, and not just the banking sector, but the broader economy is going to be very, very significant. Profitable products in the past will cease to be profitable products in the future, for, and that will have wider implications and if you look at that and combine it with interest rate capping as an example and then take into account what IFRS 9 will do in terms of reducing capital for banks and the rest in an environment where they need to be raising more capital and when margins have come down you begin to understand what those implications are. They call for demystifying of insurance to laymen to increase uptake. Nicholas Nduati, News Business.